a really windy day and the sun is shining and there's no clouds in the sky so it's very hot. I've come indoors to the cottage just to sit and cool down a little bit because cottages, stone cottages in Ireland are usually very cool. Well, they are very cool. Simply because the walls are constructed with quite a thickness of stone. You can see just looking at the window how thick the stone walls are. So I loaded up a video this morning about making a raised bed. And I decided anyway that what I'd do is I'd continue to extend the bed. So we'll just go outside and have a look at how things are coming on. As you can see the bed is really really close to the cottage. And what I've done, I've hauled some more stone down. And I've taken the stone that secured the end of the bed out and I've re-aligned it so it's going up. Just see if I pull back here. It's now going up towards the entrance to the orchards and the vegetable garden. Now I'm just going to show you quickly how this is done. My neighbour has a mower out so it's a bit noisy. It's very, very simple and it's surprisingly quick. Now I've been working on my own doing this but I'm quite sure if there was a couple of people working together this could be done in even half the time. So I've put the stone on the edges and I've put down cardboard and paper and then I'm piling the soil on top. You can see where the willow is, that's the size of the original bed and if you have a look on the previous video you can see that too. I don't worry too much about edging the bed in terms of height of the stone because it's very easy to add more stone on the top and stone is something that we have quite a lot of here in the west of Ireland. Now many people build raised beds with wood. In fact you can buy them now in the shops. The only thing about using wood is that it's not permanent where a stone is and invariably you have to treat the wood or the wood comes already treated. So it's good just to kind of look at, at just whatever uh, materials are around whatever is natural to the environment where you live. I mean, when I used to live in London, um, I used to love going, um, I think it's called skip diving now. <laughs> but basically you're just picking up what other people throw away and you're making full use of it. Now initially, um, I grew a lot of stuff in tires, but tires are not ideal. I mean, the tyres that I used were really well cleaned out and I lined them with wool to absorb anything that was coming off the inside of them. And in fact, they're fine if you're just going to grow um, non-edible plants. But they're not ideal for edible. But if you have nothing else, I mean, they are a stopgap and you just are practical and use common sense and try to deal with the situation where you have pollution coming off the inside of the tyres. And there are lots of ways to deal with that. So this is the bed. I went indoors to have a cup of tea. I'm going to be making a pot of tea shortly, sitting down, cooling off, and then coming back out doing a bit more work. But it's already doubled in size anyway. <laughs> 